And we're live. Okay, hi, good uh, morning, uh, good evening. Uh, I know there's a lot of people in Europe, uh, it's probably seven o'clock or 6.30, I think. So uh, I'd like to say hello to everybody. Um, I was supposed to be in the salon, a uh, beautiful model, actually a friend of Abby's. Uh, we colored her hair last week, we were gonna cut it, but I don't know whether you know, but uh, California's on lockdown again. So we're on lockdown number three till Christmas Eve after Christmas, so a bit of a bummer. But you know what? We just gotta move on and we just gotta keep rolling. And uh, you know, this haircut actually gave me some inspiration from lockdown. Uh, I was in here yesterday thinking what I could do for you guys. And I remember in the salon, there were so many people coming in with like baseball caps on, girls, guys, and they had hair that was flicky and it was hair that was sort of long and grown out. So I thought, you know, I looked at them and I was really, you said I liked it, but even though they wanted to get their hair cut, I actually liked it. So if you look at this shape, it's sort of very sort of long. It's, it's layered, but it's still quite long in the layers. And then there's this shape where like, if this was sort of more organic, it would stick out. And that's what people were doing. They were coming in and there was some bits popping out here and popping out here and their fringes were too long. So if I take the doll head off, what you get is this really nice, super little shape to the hair. And it's where the layers are down the bottom, but instead of cutting the layers again back in, I left them quite long on the top. So you get this super cool little swingy shape. And it's really something that I was sort of taken back with so many short haircuts coming into the salon and they were grown out. So I wanna try and sort of give you an idea with a technique called wrap cutting on how you actually achieve this type of haircut. Now remember, this has been blow dried really, really straight for everybody to see. So there's a lot of like detail in it. So afterwards we can actually see how we took that weight out and how we actually melted in that shape onto the head. You can see the way it's not so strong. It has that nice bevel right there. And that was using the blade to create that technique. So there's a lot in it, but I wanted to show you the shape before we got into the haircut. And again, this is all blow dried, but you're now gonna see a little bit more of an organic one, where it's just gonna be left dry naturally, and we can go from one to the other and maybe detail this a little bit more at the end, okay? So let me take over, see all my doll heads, all the girls. So <laughs> now we can come through to here. I'm gonna pop her on there. So before I start, let me just go through um, the preparation. Um, anybody that doesn't know me, my name is Shay MC. I'm the Global Art Director for Sebastian. And I forget that sometimes, you know, that holds um, to be very proud of being the Global Art Director. I have a huge team behind me, international team, uh, people, the marketing team behind me, you know, innovation on new products. And basically, I'm going to show you a lot of sort of techniques that are driven from Sebastian through the heritage of like maybe 30, 40 years and how we've developed those techniques. So it's really a case of preparing the hair. And what I did was I am only using one, one product here and that's dark oil. The reason I'm only using one product is that dark oil is something that when you're letting the hair dry naturally and you want the hair to create that movement, it will take away any of that frizz, it'll give it a little bit more detail, but it won't take the volume out because I wanna still have this natural movement. So I can tell you, I used a lot of dark oil. I might even use some more dark oil as we go. But now after that, really, I'm just dampening the hair down with water because the oil is enough. I've used a lot of dark oil because it really helps when I'm starting to use the blade as well. So down here, you can see everything that I've got here. It's just just uh, all your sort of little knickknacks that you need. So I have my feather blades. Again, this is part of the Sebastian history. We've built this over 40 years. Um, so many different techniques. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Again, every time I cut hair, I use a feather blade. Every single time. Fresh, sometimes I can use two. Uh, I have my little pack here, my dark oil, my water, uh, different types of combs. I'm using a very small comb today because I want a lot of tension. So I want the surface of the hair to be super smooth and then a little bit of hairspray afterwards. So here we go. So let me take you through what we want to do here. 
So as you can see, the fringe is quite long on the shape itself. So I am going to take a C section, like really, really simple. Everything is just isolated at the back. So the section only runs from the back of the ear through to the top. And then from there, we take a C section right around. And each section comes down and it wraps into that section. So really by wrapping the hair, what you're going to do is you're going to maintain length and you're going to maintain weight, okay? So you have to have reference points. So I'm going to give you some reference points, but up to you really on how short or how long you want to have everything. And because this is a little bit more of an organic shape that we're going to put in, I'm going to give you a reference point to just maybe the tip of the nose. And then we're going to work from the tip of the nose. And if you can just follow my finger, it's going to work its way around and it's probably just going to be an inch below the earlobe. Okay, so we're going to use that as our reference and that's going to be our visual guide. So the visual guide is really, really important. You know, again, part of Sebastian's philosophy is all the terminology of how we get to where we're going. And usually that's through a reference point um, on the head. So it's either a cheekbone or the top of the um, eyebrow or the tip of the nose or the bridge of the cheek, the, the bottom of the lip, the ears. And you just have these reference points to constantly in your head check as you go along. So um, I'm using sort of just some water now to start the haircut. Always when you're using the blade, make sure that the hair is in control. And when I say in control, that it's damp enough that when the process itself starts to take place, that everything is going to be a really nice experience for the client. Okay, so remember, a blade is something that you keep flat to the head, like the surface of the hair. You can see how clean I have the surface of the hair. The tension in my left hand is quite strong, so I'm keeping control of that. And then I just press, and it's a case of the tension is going to go onto that blade, and it's going to cut the hair. Now remember, clean surfaces get you clean cuts. So Abby, if you can just go in through there, you can see that there's no tearing on the hair, hair shaft. I, I hear a lot of people say, oh, but the blade, you know, it can tear the hair. Usually, it's, the, it's the, not the tool that's the problem. It's the, it's the way it's used. So again, I'm finding that I'm getting everything prepared nice and clean, as you can see. I have here as my guide, and this is in its sort of natural fall. Now the thing that's going to change is the blade. So I was horizontal, and now I'm slightly diagonal. And now I start to just gently go through that. The tension is all in this left hand. And then after that, the tension really is you applying the pressure. And remember, the blade's not going like this. The blade is nice and flat, okay? So something that's a little different now, and this is why we call it wrap cutting is, we're directing the hair forward, you can see. So instead of it being in the natural fall, it's now directing itself forward to use this as my guide, okay? Now that's in my hand here, and then the blade stays in the same position, and the diagonal is there, and I think of that reference point, which is down just here. So we're working this nice oval shape, okay? we have any questions, guys, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm here for, you know, any questions, whether that's about the blade, whether that's about the comb, um, whether it's why do I use the small part of the comb. The reason I use the small part of the comb is that I can keep all those sections nice and clean. If you had the big ridges on the comb, sometimes you take away too much hair. So again, it's all about like how you use the blade, how you use the comb to create that nice tension. And you can see that I'm also cutting the hair. I'm not just using the blade to really thin the hair out that there's nothing left. I'm actually just using that blade and I'm usually just using it and tapping it along so I can cut the hair. So I still wanna keep a nice solid line as you can see through here, but it's nicely shattered as well at the same time. So the effect is that we are just sort of using the blade to do two things. So those two things are reduce weight and length at the same time. Let's go through this. And I'm just checking everything right through because this is the section that you're gonna follow the whole way around. 
A lot of people are saying that people are scared of razor cuts because yes. they've just been done badly in the past. Yes. So. And, and here's the other thing, and I totally agree with you know anybody that's there. I'll tell you who also is scared of razor cuts, and that's your client. Mm. So your client is the person who's going to tell you when you walk up with a razor or a blade or whatever you want to call it, is that, oh no, I don't want you to touch my hair with that because the last time somebody did that, it was a really bad experience, it felt horrible, and my hair just really, really just, uh, it, it felt so bad, the condition felt compromised. And the reason being behind that is that either the blade was used wrong in a sense of like, as I said, if you do this to the hair, you're going to tear the shaft of the hair. But if you lay that blade on and you start to use that blade to cut the hair, guys, it is cut just like a scissor. Now, if I want to reduce the weight, well, then you're going over and you're peeling it off. So you're taking that top layer off the hair that's taking the weight out. But it's not necessarily uh, 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 damaging the hair because the blade is brand new, the tension is perfect, and also the way the angle of the blade is hitting the hair shaft means that you're not going to have shredded hair. So I think a lot of it's to do with, you know, sometimes the person using it because they, they're not educated enough in that. And at Sebastian, you know, a lot of our... Uh, Methodology is teaching people, you know, how to use the blade in the right way, what products to use when you're preparing the hair for the haircut. Sometimes you'll use a different product for different hair. Um, also, what hair to use the blade on. We don't use the blade on every single type of hair. We don't use it on curly hair. We don't ever go and use it on um, very coarse textured hair. So remember, the blade is something that you can use um, in conjunction with the scissor. So say you're looking and you're going, but I don't really use the blade, and I don't like, you know, want it, so can we just do this with a scissor? So let me show you. Let's take the next section down. If you want to use a scissor, you just take your section, remember, small sections, go around the head. Very easy, drop that down. But why not use scissor and blade? I mean, this is what we try and we try and educate um, our team in Sebastian is that like we we give you the techniques so as that you can be creative, basically. So there is no right or there is no wrong when it comes to cutting hair. All we can do is inspire you or to give you some better ideas on how or how to look at how you would cut hair. But if you wanted to take and use a scissor, you could take your sections down. Same thing. Keep everything really, really clean. Take your sections down like so. Find your guide from underneath. And if you just use your scissor, you'll see the guide underneath. There it is right there. And then you can go in and you can deep point cut through there. But what is the difference by using the scissor and by using the blade. And here's the difference, is that I just put the scissor in there and it's just cut away the length. Okay, it's been point cut, so I've got a nice irregular sort of pattern. But here's the difference with the blade, is that when I use the blade on this section, because I'm going to skim, I'm reducing some of the weight as well as the length. So by doing that, what you're going to do is you're going to have a more beveled shape and a more transparent shape and a more movable shape. So the blade does two things at once. And I'm not saying the scissor is wrong because I use the scissor a lot myself. But in these cases, by just being able to get my blade and run it over the top of the hair, you can see what it's doing. It's skimming that top layer off. So what it's going to do is give you more of this fitted, beveled shape. Now, what you would do with the scissor is you would go in afterwards and you would blow dry the hair, you would go in afterwards and then you would start to go and sort of take more weight away. So with this and, and the, the blade is that it's doing those two things at once. 
Andrew said something, our Andrew John said something really interesting. He said, a lot who use the razor can't cut hair and use it as a shortcut. Hi, Andrew. How are you? Yeah, I, you know what? I, I, uh, Andrew knows that it's something that has always been a, um, a love of mine. Uh, and, you know, it's true. Sometimes you can actually look at um, how the blade is used and you can, you say, it's an easy or a quick way out. But I can tell you now, number one, your client is not going to be happy. Uh, because a quick way out using the blade the wrong way really, really affects it, the hair. So that's number one. And then number two, you don't actually learn anything yourself because you don't have the feeling. And the feeling that I'm talking about is feeling the tension, feeling how the hair is when you apply the pressure onto the blade. I mean, to be able to go along and just take sections like this and just hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. And it's, it's something that... Um, it, it, it's rough, it's raw, and I get it if you want to be like super, super creative, but most of the time we're in an environment where, you know, precision is important, balance is important, very, very important. Balance is one of those things that's super important. So you're constantly checking for balance, you're constantly checking for weight. So all these little things makes up a good hairdresser. And again, this is something that we sort of try and teach with Sebastian, is that like, it's not just all about freestyle. It's not all about just go for it, you know? Someone's asking to use a razor without a guard. I don't use a razor without a guard because I don't trust myself. So <laughs> I don't trust myself in the sense of that I, I've never really used a razor without a guard. So my go-to blade is a feather blade um, because um, I'm so used to it. And also, if, if I use so many different techniques, um, that if I use a technique like, say, pen cuttings, like something like this, and I come down through the hair, and if the unguarded uh, hits my finger, I'm going to be in trouble. So usually it's more because of the different techniques that we have at Sebastian that I don't. But, I mean, um, Gerard from Hairbraid, I mean, he uses both, but he really can master the uh, open blade or the razor, I'm not too sure what you call it, but he's fantastic at that. So I'm sure, I'm, I'm trying to get him to show me exactly how to use it. So um, yeah, it's, it's your own preference, you know. It's just there's so many different techniques in the Sebastian catalog of um, how we sort of cut hair that it sometimes gets very, very close to the fingers. So it's uh, something that I, you have to be very aware of. So you can see, I'm just taking the sections down now, on top of one another, and I'm using, you know, horizontal in the middle and then diagonal. So you can see it's all diagonal now. So we're starting to create this nice oval to the hair. And you can see I'm bringing the hair right around. So each time I'm bringing the hair around, bringing it around, I have my guide, which is right here. Sorry, Abby, you probably have to get in there and then I work it through there. So, yeah, it's just something where you're wrapping the hair from the head around to the previous section, which will actually maintain length and weight. So you'll see it better on this side. Next section. So normally I would work in a natural fall, but on here I'm bringing it around, and then I'm using my blade as the diagonal. So you can just see there I'm going, I'm going down. Next section. Turning it around. And then you can see here, I can use the heel sometimes. And then the heel just goes down through the hair. Okay. So let's take the next section. And we're going to bring, these sections now can be a little bigger. So we can bring these completely forward. Now you'll start to see the wrap te technique really coming into place. So now you can see that we're bringing from that last section, which is behind the ear, and there if I turn the doll head, you'll see there's that final last section from behind the ear. So we're coming from here and right around, and now we're starting to bring the hair and wrap it onto the head, bringing it down. So let me add, 
a little bit more water. Yeah, you'll probably see it a little better, Abby, if you stay right there, we'll actually be yeah. able to show a little bit more. So again, this is why I'm using a smaller toothed comb, because I want to create some nice tension. So I'm starting now really to bring that forward. And I'm just going to the middle, just where I started. Now again, make sure that you don't have too much hair in. And now I can actually skim a little bit higher. So I'm gonna skim from here, and you can see that I'm gonna to skim to my baseline. So that skin, what's that gonna do? It's gonna bevel that line, and it's gonna really fit that sort of shape. But you can see right here, it now starts to fit in onto the head. So you get this more seamless little look. Let's knock that off there. So next section, so there's my guy. So remember, wrap the hair. So make sure your tensions are nice and clean. Wrap the hair right around. So now I've got enough in this hand. So you can see I'm constantly just keeping control, keeping those sections nice and clean, keeping control. And then I can start to skim a little bit more. So I start to skim at the top. You'll see the skim at the top. And then I'll work my way down. Can I ask a personal question? Yes, you can. Uh, this reminds me, the finished haircut reminds me of the cut you did with Andrew for the trend vision. Remember like the burgundy yeah, color? Yeah. Did you use a razor for that or you use yeah, a scissors for I that one? I actually used a scissor and a razor for Andrew's look for um, trend vision um, because the, the actual line is the same as here. And um, if, you, if you turn this shape here, that would be exactly like how Andrew's shape was through the back where it melted in. It's just Andrew's shape was up here. But that melting technique of what we're talking about, of how the blade runs down the hair like so, you can actually see if I do that, see the weight come away? If I just keep doing that, look how the blade just melts in the hair because it's at the right angle. So Andrew's look was exactly like this, just taking all that weight away. And then what I did was I just nipped off all those ends. So he had this nice round oval shape where his color could just um, beautifully sort of complement the haircut. So, uh, and uh, didn't he just go and win the uh, International Trend Vision Award? Uh, so it was a fantastic, uh, fantastic time for Andrew. Deserve it. Just the haircut reminded me so much of that yes, look. Yes, well, it is. It's very similar to the haircut, you're right. So I'll just turn around a little bit now. So. Next section. Small in control. Andrew said that haircut was done on a Friday evening after 12 clients. Boom, Shay nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> probably was. I can't remember, but it probably was. We always worked so hard in the salon that it was like something that you just had an idea. And we workshopped it. I know we workshopped it on some doll heads because I remember cutting the shape for Andrew and um, so he could workshop the look itself. But I think the actual haircut, you're right, was probably done after work at stupid o'clock. So it looks a little strange when you see it like this. It's like, whoa, you know, what, what? it's like a little uh, rounded sort of page or something <laughs> like that, you know? So, but that's what we're doing here. We're just wrapping the hair on top of one another so that when you see the final look, it is something that's nice and soft and, you know, almost like it's grown out. This is this whole COVID hair that I've been talking about where I really like the COVID looks when they were coming in, I was like, oh, do you really want your haircut? Because they had these beautiful little flicks and kicks. And uh, it was something that I was really attracted to. But obviously, they were just sick and tired of their hair. So like, they were just like, no, no, just cut it off. So I'm just going over my shape here and just playing around with it, you know. Okay, so now let's turn it around. So I turn it here. So now we've got this back section. So what you really need to do is with the back section is remember that everything is going to come around to meet. So what we really need to do is 
we have to make sure that everything is wrapped. Okay, so if I stand here, you might be able to see it better, guys. So the light is here. So I've wrapped everything from here. So all you've got to do is take sections diagonally. Like so. So take a section just from your shortest section that's here. Go from here and go around, okay? And then just isolate that there, okay? So your next section... I need the smaller comb so I can keep the sections nice and clean. So now you can see, here is my guide right here. So you can see where we've gone to and maybe just clean that up a little, okay? And then just take sections that are comfortable for you. You don't have to grab it all. The worst thing about trying to take hair and just trying to sort of bring it into something that's it's too uncomfortable, that's enough hair. So it's gonna be nice and quick. So once we go like this, You'll, you'll just skim it to the guide, like so. Next section, bring it around, like so. Keep control. Now, once I have the control, I can find where I am. There it is, there's the guide. Skim to how much you want. I wanna just skim to here, so I can keep it nice and strong. Okay, so let's just get that central so we know where we are. There we go. Okay, so that's your central section. Now your next section comes down and you bring it around. Bring it around. That's enough hair. Find it. And there we go, okay? And then skim to that line. Any other questions? Are we okay, Abby? Mm. Let's see, let's go through. Somebody asked a question about, I'm just trying to find it, it was a good question. It was about cutting with the razor and the sideburns. Oh yeah, how would you approach sideburn area when you get that kick in the hair, especially when it's tucked behind the ear most of the time? Um, hmm. I'm trying to figure that one out. So there's a kick in front of the ear? Here. I think it's more like, imagine the hair is tucked behind the ear and it's kicking like towards the face. Um, cut it off. <laughs> Um, I'm not too sure, to be honest. It's very hard to visualize. Yeah, when the hair goes behind the ear a lot of the time, is that if it's too long, it'll kick out here. So you need to bring it in and usually take that line back that way. So cut it off so that it actually will sit in a little bit better. I hope that's what we're talking about. I think you answered that. Yeah. So also, um, for anybody who's watching, um, we also have sort of uh, something exciting that we've been working on with Hairbrained uh, for the last few months. Uh, I know I'm certainly super excited about it. Um, uh, it's basically me and Sebastian. So you're going to have Sebastian Professional um, and Shade Empty giving you four haircuts that you can buy on the Hairbrained uh, Facebook site and I think it comes at the start of January and there's uh, four haircuts and basically I don't want to go into too much detail because I don't want to give too much away but it's fantastic for um, us to work with Hairbrained uh, to offer sort of some of the Sebastian methodology to people that maybe aren't aware that you know Sebastian has such education such strong education um, because we've had it for over 40 years and what we tried to do was just um, reignite some of the education because everything we've been working so well with Hairbrain and the response has been so good is that we thought we would actually do something for our own 
Sebastian, you know, tribe, um, but then also for, you know, newcomers that maybe don't know the brand, don't know um, how we use the blade, what are the whys. Um, and as I said, there's also a lot of education when it comes to the references, the education on the head shape, reverse consultation, why we do this, why we do that. So, um, yes, yeah, so we're super excited. So it will be myself um, giving you the demonstration um, um, on the four haircuts. And then if, you know, you really like that, the, the really exciting part is that you will be able to go live uh, with your own doll head and actually go through the haircuts in detail with one of our international artistic teams. So that's amazing as well. So, you know, you will be able to sit and have a glass of wine and watch me, but then really when you want to get in and really want to go and work at it, you can um, go live, get your doll head, and you will be able to sit, and, or sit, you'll stand, and you will work the actual haircuts themselves with one of the international Sebastian team members. So a lot in, ahead for January which is super exciting. So um, yeah, lots, to, lots of new stuff coming. So let's just turn the shape around. So you can see by taking everything forward and we've brought everything around into this shape. So you can see by wrapping it around the head, what you're left with is more length through here. So I don't want to show you the actual shape just yet. I'm just sort of leaving that sit because I want to do the other side. The reason I do that is because how do we check everything? Visually, you want to be able to check everything. Check the balance. Check the weight. So it's not just your hands. It's not just your hands. Sometimes you have to stand back and you have to look. So by combing the hair into the direction that I've cut the hair, I will be able to start that other side. So by just doing this, and just letting it sit, we'll be able to just go back and use it as a reference, okay? So now, let me just turn around. Are you okay there, Abby? I'm great. Okay, so let me just turn the doll head around again. Someone says, can you use the same technique, which I'm guessing they mean like the hair wrapping technique, but yeah. using a scissors. Absolutely, yeah, that's what I, I showed at the start. I think they might have just come in. Yeah, so you don't really, you know, I mean, the difference is, as I said, using the scissor, um, you won't necessarily get the same weight reduction because the blade is taking this, um, the weight out of the hair as well as the length. So, um, also guys, just before you start the other side, make sure you isolate that section you've just cut. So it's a central section, so just make sure that you isolate that out of the way. So now you're just left with that panel, okay? So yeah, you can of course use the scissor, but what I would say is use the scissor and use the blade. Use both, see how you get on. Maybe you want to use the blade in a different way to sort of reduce some of the weight. So going from that point again, just like we did on the first, take that diagonal section like so, and just isolate this hair away so you see where you are. Okay, now a little bit of water, and start to take this section into your section right here, okay? So again, like I did before, just find hair that's comfortable for your hands. So this, I don't need to have that there. This, I do need to have that. So I need to keep that tension nice and clean. And there's my guide. So now the angle stays the same. And I can use the heel if I want. And I just go down along, like so. Keeping the hair damp always. So basically keeping the hair will keep you in control. So you can see that I'm keeping the hair always in control. It's never getting away from me or it's never getting too frizzy or it's never getting too dry. So you can actually use a leave-in conditioner like Potion on Light or you can actually just use water because I've prepped the hair so much. So basically, you know, I don't really have to use too much product because I use so much dark oil. And the dark oil is great because it's something that I can let the hair dry naturally. It's gonna help me. And it's gonna keep that volume in the hair. It's not gonna weigh it down too much, so. I think someone just came in, so I think you already mentioned this, but they're asking what um, blade slash razor is he using? 
feather blade, right? Yeah, I use the feather blade and then I use the standard blades. This this is a 30 pack. Um, I love these ones, they're, they're fantastic. I probably use them once or twice on the head. And it depends on, on the type of hair that I have. And again, I can't stress enough that I only use the blade on the right hair. I never use the blade on, on hair that's too compromised or hair that's curly or anything like that. So when you see me use the blade, it's all for a reason. You know, you should be using the blade all for a reason, not um, for something that's quick, fast, and can be quite violent in its own way. There's, there's guides that we follow, and this is all part of the methodology with Sebastian, is that we always have something, a reference point to work to, or there's something that we have to sort of um, follow, whether that's, you know, the tip of the nose, the bottom of the lip, you know, the, bo the bottom of the ear, um, so that we can keep ourselves on track. And also, like, it's a good experience for you as well to able to sort of view a, a, a blade that's supposed to be something that's very freestyle, but also use it as something that's very constructive. Another question, um, are there any new products coming out for Sebastian? Yes, yes, there are, but um, again, I'm, a, I'm, you know, I'm not obliged to say because I'm afraid there's a lot happening in January. So as I said, we have myself with Hairbrain, doing education, which is a first for Sebastian, which is amazing. Something that you can go on, you can buy, you know, the haircut itself, buy all the haircuts, sit at home. Then you can go and say, right, okay, I love that experience. Now I want to take the actual, um, you know, the online, almost sort of virtual haircut with one of the international team members. And you can get your doll head and you can do that. And the reason I'm telling you all this again is the products that are coming out are very, very suited to what the haircuts are. So, styling, care, all things that really help you um, when it comes to uh, doing hair in the salon or even styling the hair. But I, you know, uh, I'm not going to say any more because I'll get in trouble. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But so yes, there are. So I'm nearly there. You can see just pulling everything, wrapping it all around. Little piece left here. Okay, so let's shake it out because we're gonna have we're gonna have a very long tail in the back section, so we don't really want to sort of do that. So I'm just gonna I'm just going to show you where we are. And you might, you might start to see the COVID hair situation start to come alive when you see what I'm talking about now in a second. So let me turn her around. So people would come in with a baseball cap on and they had all these flicky bits and gone through the hair. And you know what? It was sort of something that I sort of, I was quite attracted to it. I sort of thought, oh, wow, that's really nice. I really like this. So you can see with this fringe, that's it straight. So that's the length. But when you see it with the curl and the natural wave, it's actually quite sort of, it springs up. So you have that sort of like a little bit more of an organic sort of shade to it as well. So before we do anything else, we just need to look at it. And see what we need to do, and that's deal with this back section. Now, if you want to be super creative with it, and you want to sort of leave it, and it almost looks sort of sort of mullety, you know, you can do that too. If you feel that, you know, let's, if you come around here, I mean, you can see that, you know, you could actually leave that and have you know, that type of shape where it sort of, it fits in and you've got this little mullety sort of shape that's really cool. It could be great on a guy, could be great on a young girl. Um, but if you do want to take it off, it's very, very simple. So let me just now turn the doll head around. Andrew says, would you mind if I did a Sunday service on, oops, on the Sebastian range and heritage? No, I would love that. And if you need me to help in any way, 
You know I'm there for you, brother. Always. Always. <laughs> I kind of like the mullet, but... I like the mullet too. I know. So when we ask people, should I leave the mullet? Should we leave the mullet, or are we going... Should we do this? So this is a little bit more page boy, you know? This is more like this type of thing, you know? Put in the comments if you want the mullet or if you want the page boy. Okay, so first of all, we can leave the length for the time being so we can wait to see what people think. But what you do need to do now is to actually sort of look at this center piece. So you've got this tail. Well, we've got so, one, one mullet, leave it. One mullet, leave it, yeah? yeah? Okay, so that's good. So what we wanna do is just Take a section. Marissa says she loves a good mullet. I agree. Yeah, we all love. Is that our Marissa? No, no, different Marissa. Marissa Lawson. Hi, Marissa Lawson. Loves a good mullet. I really love a good mullet. I love a good mullet. Too. I can't wait to learn how to cut I've a good been, mullet. I've, I've been. Oh, I'm, mullet. Everyone wants you to leave the mullet. Okay, so let me leave the mullet, but let's just see what we're going to do here. So. Oh, it's mullet, so good. The mullet has a tail, okay? So what we need to do is just come down and make sure that we're even on both sides. So like this is a little long here. So that's okay. So what we can do is we can just basically take it through and make sure that everything is even. And we also want to just take a little bit of weight out of there. So let me get the perimeter right first. We haven't had one vote for the other one. Everyone loves the mullet. Okay. Love, 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 heart eye emoji. Okay, so the mullet is still there. So. Let's just keep going. So guys, if you want the mullet and you want to keep the mullet in comparison to here, what I'll suggest is now you've got to work in your natural fall. So now look at my hands. Natural fall, use my hand as the ruler. So it's right here. So I'm a little uneven right here. So watch Abby, just through the top. Bang. Okay, check it. Needs a little bit there. So the mullet is going to even extend more. Okay, so now again on this side, we're coming around, checking. So I need to take a little bit of that away there. So let's go down here. I'm basically using that technique. Okay, so if you've got the right hair and you want a mullet, Honestly, guys, I can't express more. Please try the blade. Please try the blade. This is the skimming technique. We have like 15 different techniques with the blade. You're going to see more with the um, hair brains that I do. And I want you not to be scared. What we do need you to do is feel comfortable with the blade. So instead of like tearing the hair, you're not really, you know, it's not your fault. It's just really, you don't know exactly how that blade works. I can show you. I go through it in depth. Um, in January. So basically, if you want a mullet, there is no better tool than a blade to give you the mullet. So as I'm working my way along, I'm just working it through. And now I just have this little central section right here. There's that point. Just tip it off. And then finally, just that middle piece, okay? Just that little middle piece. Just to see that point there. Just, just make sure we have it in the center. So let's just take it down from the center, bring it together like so. So here's your base down here and just basically take that corner off. And just take that corner off like that. Bring this one into that section. There's that short and take that off. Very simple, just simple. You're just I know you want the mullet, but I'm just blending it. Just the slices, slices. Just take the corner off, like so. Okay. I love it. Les moulets. Yes. Les moulets. So let's just bring her around a little bit more so we can, we can dress this up. So all I'm doing now is just literally just combing the hair through just to see it might balance. You know, it's hard when you don't have, to have a mirror to check anything, but it's good to step back. So even when 
you start to play with doll heads. Always remember, guys, to take your time, step back, have a look at things. You know, don't be afraid to sort of look at it and pull it and move it around a little bit and see how it goes. Um, maybe even now would be time to sort of put a little bit more product in there so that it sort of, you know, it starts to move around and it falls a little bit more as well. So maybe I should put a little bit more dark oil in there. People are loving the mullet. Oh, that's good. So let me just shake it out. Move it around just a little. So, towel. Like, it really is a mullet. So, like, we have given you the mullet full on. So, what you've got is that sort of really sort of long extended shape through here. It's not for everybody, but it seemed to be for you. I did this one for you guys. So the mullet's made a major resurgence recently. Yeah, and it's, this one is sort of like very sort of, it's really old school. It's like this mix of a little page boy and the mullet. It's so grown out, you know? <laughs> so, what's wrong? Just the page boy, it's funny. Yeah, but it is. It's yeah. like, um, you're too young for what a page boy is. I'm you not too young. I know what a page boy is. Yeah? Yeah. So, this is page boy. Now this is exactly, so this is basically the same haircut, it's just blow dry straight. So what we have here is like something that when you blow dry it, press it with a GHD, you get this really cool little shape. And it still has that little V through here as well, like it still has that little point. But you can see that when it fits in, it really sort of, sort of melts into the head. So, um, I hope you like it if, you know, there's going to be a lot more. As I said, January is going to be a fantastic month to start off the education with Sebastian and myself. So, um, this was just one technique. I mean, this was just one technique with the blade. And that skimming technique is a small, short, then it can be a longer skim. Then there's pen cutting where you would have opened up spaces and taken out some weight. So, there's a lot. There's a lot more. So, um, I hope you like it. Uh, I hope you seem to all like the mullet, so that's a good thing. The resurgence of the mullet. And um, I will hopefully see you in January. And I just want to say to all the hairdressers in California, I'm a salon owner myself. My thoughts go out to you. Um, People in Belgium were strong. saying that their salons are closed also. Okay, so to so all the hairdressers, it's a, a, the busiest time of the year for hairdressers, December. And here we are working out of my studio. And uh, so my thoughts are with you all. Stay strong. And uh, hopefully we see you all in January. And thank you so much.